Have you ever stood on the shore, gazing out at the vast expanse of the ocean, and wondered how many mysteries still lie beneath the surface? We've discovered dinosaurs, blue whales, even giant squids, but everything you know about the deep sea is just a grain of sand. Now, imagine a colossal creature hunting in the pitch black darkness. It had no bones, no cartilage, yet it was armored with a hard shell almost 33 feet long, a living submarine specializing in terror. It was once the king of the ocean, one of the greatest predators the planet has ever known. And its story is so bizarre that even the scientific community can't agree on the facts. This isn't some mythical sea monster. It's real, it left fossils, and it has a proper scientific name, Camarocerus. The name, from ancient Greek, means chambered horn, a fitting nickname for its long, rigid shell that was divided into many compartments. Camarocerus belong to a group of mollusks called cephalopods, the same family as the squids, octopuses, and cuttlefish we know today. In today's episode, we're diving into the deep waters of the past, traveling back to a forgotten era, 470 million years ago, to uncover the truth about this colossal, submarine-like giant. Are you ready? Camarocerus, Lord of the Ancient Oceans. Approximately 485 million years ago, after a minor extinction event marked the end of the Cambrian period, a new era dawned, the Ordovician period. It was a time that lasted over 41 million years when Earth truly became a water planet. Compared to previous geological periods, the Ordovician was characterized by more constant and sudden environmental changes, causing major shifts in the course of evolution. Throughout this period, although life on land began to emerge with primitive arthropods like centipedes and spiders, the main stage of life remained the ocean. The oceans back then were far from empty. They were bustling underwater kingdoms dominated by invertebrates. The marine ecosystem was incredibly rich and diverse, with the presence of familiar trilobites, reef-building organisms, and especially the strong rise of brachiopods, echinoderms, and mollusks. The explosion of soft-bodied nautiloids, a group within the cephalopod class, was one of the most impressive evolutionary events of the Ordovician laying the groundwork for the development of giant marine creatures in subsequent periods. Unlike many prehistoric creatures that existed for only a short time, Camarocera survived and thrived throughout the entire Ordovician period. Its fossils have been found across the ancient equatorial oceans, corresponding to modern-day North America, Europe, and China. This indicates its wide distribution and high adaptability during that era. When talking about Camarocaras, the first and most striking thing is its size. Initially, the size estimates for this creature made it famous as a massive sea monster. Some sources claimed it could be anywhere from 20 to 30 feet long, a size comparable to a double-decker bus or a mini-submarine. This living submarine image cemented its status as the greatest predator of the Ordovician period. The legend of a sea monster nearly 33 feet long, ruling the ocean, is deeply ingrained in many people's minds. The first reconstructions showed a gigantic Camarocaras, towering like a spire in the deep sea, instilling terror in all living things. It was a magnificent, epic picture, but was it accurate? Science, unlike history, never accepts an absolute truth. Using fragmented and incomplete fossil evidence, early paleontologists relied on what could only be called highly dubious field observations to arrive at an impressive figure of 30 feet. But as modern technology allows us to analyze every minute detail, a completely different picture is beginning to emerge. It turns out, Camarocaras was once considered a wastebasket taxon. Imagine a giant trash can where scientists would toss all similar looking fossils from the smallest fragments to the longest pieces without having a definitive species identification. 
In the case of Camaroceras, many of the colossal fossils actually belonged to a different, better described genus, Endocaris giganteum. The debate wasn't just about size, it was a fundamental question of identity. Camaroceras and Endoceras looked so similar that only the most expert researchers could distinguish them by subtle anatomical features. So, was the 30-foot monster we thought we knew truly Camaroceras? Or was it just a case of mistaken identity across millions of years of history? This is the beauty of science. It's not a textbook filled with final answers, but a long journey of discovery, questions, and debate. The story of Camarakaras is not just about an extinct creature, it's about how we, as modern humans, piece together the past with imperfect evidence. Lifestyle and hunting strategy, the ultimate ambush. Predator. Camarakaras was not the undisputed ruler of an empty ocean. Its habitat, the Ordovician Sea, was a world filled with formidable rivals. Even as an apex predator, Camarakaras had to stay on its guard. Its most dangerous rivals were other predators of the same caliber. The Eurypterid, or sea scorpion, was one of them. These massive scorpions, with their sharp claws and hard kittenous shells, could have gone head to head with Camarakaras. A battle between these two giants would surely have been a terrifying sight. Camaroceras also had to compete with a relative, Endocaris, a species believed to have reached truly massive sizes. The battle for territory and food between these apex predators shaped the Ordovician ecosystem. However, Camaroceras had its own advantages. With a shell as hard as concrete, it was nearly invulnerable from above. The only vulnerability was its soft underside, where its tentacles and mouth were located. Because of this, Camarocarus developed a highly effective hunting strategy, ambush predation. It used its chambered shell to control buoyancy, allowing it to float motionlessly in the water column. When an unsuspecting prey swam by, Camarocarus would suddenly launch itself forward using water jets from its siphon, grab its meal with powerful tentacles, and deliver it to its hard beak to be crushed. Its diet included other large nautiloids and eurypterids. This strategy can be compared to modern-day animals like alligators, which often hide beneath the water's surface to wait for their prey, or the anglerfish, which uses a lure to bait food. It may have also scoured the seafloor by crawling or floating sluggishly, similar to some modern rays. The contrast between its large, intimidating appearance and its lazy lifestyle makes this creature uniquely fascinating. The story of Camarocaras would not be complete without comparing it to its famous relatives in the modern ocean. When we think of cephalopods, we usually picture the brilliant octopus, a master of disguise, or the lightning-fast squid, with its ability to change color in an instant. But compared to these masters of camouflage and speed, Camarocaras was unbelievably slow. It couldn't change color. It couldn't dart into crevices. Its huge shell dictated its entire lifestyle, a patient ambush predator, a complete opposite of the high-speed hunting style of today's squid. Just imagine a squid chasing a school of fish, tearing through the water at high speed. Now think about Camaroceras, a living submarine lumbering along in the dark. This lifestyle teaches an important evolutionary lesson. Speed and flexibility won out over size and protection. Its relatives, such as the cuttlefish and octopus, gave up their hard shells in exchange for a soft body. This sacrifice allowed them to evade predators more effectively, find food in a wider range of environments, and develop superior intelligence. This difference created a dramatic evolutionary narrative. The ruler of the past yielded its throne to the better adapted rulers of the present. A surprising connection, the Nautilus, a living fossil. There's a creature that has survived for hundreds of millions of years, a time traveler of the deep. 
carrying with it the secrets of Kamarakuras and an entire era lost to the past. Scientists affectionately call it a living fossil, the Nautilus. Just look at it. The Nautilus's appearance is a clear reminder of its hard-shelled ancestors. Like Kamarakuras, it has a rigid outer shell divided into several air-filled chambers. This system acts as a natural ballast, allowing it to control its buoyancy to gently dive into the deep sea or rise toward the surface. This is the very same biological technology that Camarasuras used millions of years ago to float in ambush. However, a crucial difference allowed the Nautilus to survive where its giant cousin went extinct, its spiral shell. Instead of being straight and cumbersome like a submarine, the Nautilus's shell coils perfectly, which made it far more maneuverable. While still relatively slow compared to squid or octopus, this small evolutionary tweak was enough to help it survive the global glaciation at the end of the Ordovician period. The final challenge and extinction. After millions of years of dominance, Camaraceras faced an enemy that no living creature could defeat, climate change. At the end of the Ordovician period, Earth suddenly entered an ice age. The supercontinent Gondwana drifted towards the South Pole, causing a rapid cold snap that drastically lowered global temperatures. This event triggered the Ordovician Silurian extinction, one of the five largest mass extinction events in Earth's history. Sea levels dropped by hundreds of feet. Coral reefs and the habitats of countless marine species were devastated. With its massive shell and reliance on deep water environments, Camarakuras had no chance of adapting. Its habitat shrank, its food sources vanished, and its heavy body made it impossible to migrate to warmer waters in time. The disappearance of Camarakuras was more than just a loss. It was a profound lesson. It showed that even the strongest can't survive when they can no longer adapt to their changing environment. The failure of these armored giants paved the way for the evolution of faster, more flexible cephalopods, laying the foundation for the intelligent squids and octopuses we see today. Camaroceras is not just a fascinating prehistoric creature in its own right, it played a vital role in the evolutionary history of life on Earth. It belonged to a critical evolutionary branch of the cephalopod class. Along with other early nautiloids, Camarakuras represented an era where armor was the key to survival and dominance. Its rigid outer shell was not just for protection, but also served as a buoyancy control system for movement in the ocean. However, in later evolution, its descendants took a completely different path. While the Nautilus, a surviving representative, kept its outer shell, other groups like squid, octopus, and cuttlefish gradually lost this armor or kept only a small internal structure. This change allowed them to achieve superior speed, flexibility, and camouflage, making them the most agile and intelligent predators in the ocean today. So, what does this story mean for us? Millions of years ago, the dominant ocean creatures were slow and armored. Today, the dominant creatures are fast and smart. This raises a thought-provoking question. As our planet continues to change, will the animals we consider the peak of evolution, like squid and octopus, also one day become living fossils? Will a new species equipped with abilities we can't even imagine, rise to dominate the ocean, leaving today's intelligent squid as a relic of the past, just as Camarakuras once was. The story of Camarakuras shows us a profound truth. Evolution isn't a straight line, but a labyrinth of twists, turns, and trade-offs. It's a forgotten link, a lesson about the shift from the armored power of ancestors to the speed and flexibility of their descendants. If you love the intelligent octopus and lightning fast squid of today, then you have this extinct giant to thank because its disappearance opened the door to a new era where the best adapted will always rise to rule. 
let's continue to uncover more incredible mysteries of the lost world. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next adventure. And what prehistoric creature do you want us to reveal next? Let us know in the comments below.